Okay, guys, in Lessons 200s, we're going to see a lot of Rook endgames. These are one of the most typical endgames that we're going to be getting since Rooks come out to the game late. And, of course, we've had powerful lessons on Rook endgames, but now we're going to start reinforcing and taking them to a new level. So here we have the first one. We're going to do only five, and this one, you should know it instantly. Why to move? What's that resource that we use? To win well if you didn't know it if you want to find it on your own pause the video every time we change to a new exercise so this one as the white pieces all that i need to do is of course promote my pawn rook is in the way if i did something like rook b8 i lose the pawn so we're going to use another tactic that we learned many lessons ago which is the skewer so all we need to do is move the rook all the way to either h8 or g8 or f8 and now we're going to promote no matter what. If they take the pawn, then skewer, and then we do the king and rook checkmate. The next three exercises, they have to do with that same resource. A little bit more complicated, but if we really understand it, guys, uh, we should be able to apply it to more complex exercises. So with that said, black to move in this one. And let me know in the comments if you found this one, because it's going to give me a lot of information to prepare future lessons like this one. So the main thing here is to realize that this king is far away from the edge, which allows us to do the same thing. Go with the skewer idea. So it looks counterintuitive to let go of the pawn, but here after check, if the king doesn't take the pawn, we promote, they must take. And now since they're so far from that edge, we have the time to play pawn to a2 and now no matter what we're going to go to do the same skewer idea if they try to go over here well same thing works trying to promote if the rook takes us we get the skewer and then finally if they want to just do something like this well we have check and we promote no matter what. So again, guys, it seems so simple, but you don't know how many people have seen having these opportunities and they simply miss them. Now, next exercise, and again, feel free to pause the video every time, we have the white pieces and you should know also how to win. But for this one, you need to mix up a few things. First one is the same idea of the skewer, but the second one is you need to know, guys, your king and pawn endgames. And we've had so many lessons on them, but the most important ones are when we talked about past pawns, the king and pawn versus king, and of course, other king and pawn endgames that you cannot forget. So here, it's very simple. The move is h7. We advance because if they take, we have the same skewer. Now, let's say that the king goes over. Well, we're going to go ahead and help the pawn promote. If they take, we do the same skewer. And even though the king is close by, it doesn't matter because we should know our king and pawn endgames. This should be an easy win. Of course, if you're playing this in the game, you want to calculate, double check, but it should be pretty easy. Now I collect the pawn and my king is just closer to the other pawns. If you, again, if you went over lesson number 29, this should be, guys, a piece of cake. We talked about opposition and everything else. Now, we got only two more. Next one definitely has to do with the same concept, but a little bit more complicated. 90% of my students, when I show them this exercise, they go for the move. And again, pause the video if you want to find it on your own. They come up with the move, pawn to d6. And the idea is that they're thinking, well, if this king takes, I have the move check and I promote. And if they take with the pawn, I have the move rook a8 and then I got the same concept, right? Well, what they failed to realize is that black pieces could play king c6 and then you could get checkmated. And I know that some of you that are a little bit more advanced, you're going to be thinking, well, what's the big deal? What if I just move the king from that situation? Well, now they take. And even though you have this check and then promote, this is going to be, guys, a draw. After d5, if the black pieces know what they're doing, it's going to be a draw. There's no way the king is going to be able to help and king and pawn are just going to promote. So that's why it's so important 
not only to understand these resources, but also to be able to calculate accurately. In the end game, you make a mistake, there's no time to recover. Middle game, opening, sometimes you make mistakes, and then you have the remaining of the game to recover. End games, you have to be very, very accurate. So, with that said, what's the move then in this possession? Well, you have to play king to b7 first. Guys, either you come up with this move, you consider the candidate move, and you find out it's the strongest, or you quickly look at this one like most people do and disregard because you calculate into what we just covered. So king b7 is the move, and now, no matter what, I got rook c8 with the same idea of the skewer. Of course, now if king d6, we do have this move, check, and we promote. Our king is way more active. We're going to collect some of the uh, one of the pawns at least. And anything else, like I said, we're going to do rook c8, and then we collect. Now, last exercise is going to require a little bit of uh, creativity. So it's the black pieces to move. How would you continue? Now, I assume you post a video, you give it at least five minutes, and then only then you listen to what I have to say. Well, here the black pieces have this resource to try to checkmate the king. Notice how the king seems to be very active, but it is surrounded by this pawn. So I'm thinking, if you remember lesson 90, 90 when we talked about Capablanca's uh, endgame technique and rules, one of the things that he does is he thinks of, of this ideal possession. And here, ideally, if I had my king over here and my rook on d4, this would be checkmate. But again, we need to know our basic king and pawn endgame. So the first move is rook d6. And if they take us, we take back. This is a very easy king and pawn endgame to win for black. If they don't want to do it, they have to take here. And then after king e6, there's nothing they could do to stop the checkmate without giving you the rook at least. So I hope that you found it. If you found it, let me know in the comments and I will see you in our next lesson.